where are we? What is going on? Why don't we actually at the moment get any breaks right now? What do you think is actually being priced in into equity and fixed income markets? Well, I think the narrative has moved from uh, inflation risk and central bank reaction function now forward to uh, looking at uh, this growth inflation uh, puzzle uh, in, in the light of uh, the quite aggressive central bank reactions uh, at the moment. So we're not getting any reprieve because we have this on the one hand. We also have, and maybe and hopefully we get informed this week on the inflation picture out of the S. We are possibly uh, pricing peak uh, Fed hawkishness. We are also pricing uh, peak COVID China uncertainty and negativity. And we are also, of course, starting the week uh, with the celebrations uh, of the 9th um, of May in Russia. So we are also looking again at the Russia-Ukraine situation and repricing peak uh, uncertainty around whether we get an deceleration or an acceleration of any kind of uh, movements there. So a lot Absolutely. of price, so is, yeah, Exactly. A lot of balls in the air, as it were. Now, let's take a look at the uh, bond market. You know, do you see any let-up in the declines we've been seeing? And, you know, do you, do you have any idea when people can perhaps see the stemming of these losses? Well, it'd be fantastic if I, um, if I knew that exact timing. <laughs> I just... Uh, uh, but um, I think we all have to be quite nimble in these kind of markets, given all the uncertainties I've just laid out. It's very difficult to pinpoint. But that's why I'm looking forward to this week with the inflation data coming out, because you possibly, if we have, uh, you know, if we are seeing the peak in inflation, then maybe we have also seen the peak in pricing uh, central bank reaction function and more aggressiveness. And maybe we get a bit of a moderation in our losses in the equities and the fixed income market because we are then pricing less of a recession risk. So light at the end of the tunnel, maybe this week, but maybe it's a hope we, we would see. Maybe, maybe not. We're seeing pretty much uh, stress across asset classes. What do you do, Stephanie? How do you play this? Do you buy the dip? Do you, do you sell the bounds? What do you do with the stock market in particular? Well, you have to make sure you're looking at uh, the sectors that may be having a more longer-term potential. So I think it's important to keep the longer-term strategic um, themes uh, in mind as well, you know, because stuff like uh, cybersecurity, for instance, we have recently upgraded um, in the U.S. the healthcare sector, given the market is at the cycle where it is and everybody gets more defensive. It's looking more attractive now. Um, we have, you know, you have to have a look and weigh up between the shorter term and the medium and the longer term. Short term, we are clearly underweight Europe. We are neutral in the U.S., but we are actually still overweight um, in Asia, ex-Japan, yeah. Uh, why still overweight in Asia? Won't we be expecting capital outflows from the region to perhaps the U.S.? Yes, you're touching on a very important point. We have seen that interaction between higher U.S., higher U.S. dollar, higher U.S. rates, etc., and uh, predominantly playing out against uh, China because there the central bank divergent is the biggest um, of all in the region. So we have seen how this uh, capital outflows has been hitting the renminbi, of course, and that is something to watch and be very mindful of. But there, um, if you look at other parts uh, in the region, so we have been recently conducting some of a deep dive in Southeast Asia. Maybe there are also some countries where you have a more differentiated picture and that you can also find uh, opportunities. Stephanie, talk to me a little bit about uh, the dollar and how long you see dollar strength for here. It uh, is causing a few issues. And tell me, in the discussions that you have with the Monetary Authority of Singapore, what prism are they looking at it uh, through? Well, whatever we discuss in, in these uh, forums is obviously nothing I can dis discuss in a wider uh, forum. But if you look at um, euro dollar or the dollar, you always have two sides to the equation of, uh, of the dollar pricing. So when you look at euro dollar in particular, our studies suggest we have about five to six big figures risk premium weighing on the euro right now because of that uncertainty surrounding the, um, the forward path on the Russia-Ukraine situation 
and of course because Europe is still weighing and trying to come to a conclusion as to whether they will forego uh, gas and oil imports uh, from Russia. So that's one part that's keeping euro dollar um, down and then of course as long as this risk aversion is in the market then the US dollar as a still a shorter term safe haven is still at play as well. A strong dollar DXY at a 19-year high on the other side. Weakness in the yuan, that will impact Asian currencies, no? It will, but um, maybe we shouldn't just uh, look at the shorter-term picture and then um, project from there. And I know a lot of people are now looking at parity, which is easy to say um, if you are not too far away from it. But if you look at it um, from a medium-term and longer-term structural drivers, and um, this is a debate that's not necessarily happening at the MAS, but uh, if you look at central banks around the globe, it's actually in the public domain, that there will be a redistribution of your central bank holdings away from the dollar going forward. I think we have seen an unprecedented move from the Americans in terms of um, um, being able to put sanctions on a uh, central bank and freeze those assets and then, of course, you will have bigger concerns uh, from other central banks as well. We have seen smaller central banks, I think, in Israel already starting to diversify. You have seen, and this again is a longer term issue, now commodity contracts being priced away from the dollar. So ultimately, over the medium and longer term, you will see this to turn as well. So don't be fueled by, by what's happening uh, in the shorter term and just um, project that uh, for the medium and long term as well. There are other factors at play.